Alien Covenant, and the Anunnaki Connections. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rex Barrett Week Project. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are. I watched the newest installment of the Alien series last night, and I must say, wow, amazing, incredible, the best yet. I would strongly recommend watching the film, and if you've already seen it, then this isn't going to be a spoiler. If you haven't seen it yet, I must warn you, this is going to be a spoiler because I am going to give you the analysis, my interpretation of much of the symbolism that was portrayed in the movie. First of all, when the movie starts, the beginning scene is of an eyeball. It's a close-up of an eyeball. And you hear this, what do you see? And then the person says, a white room, and starts describing other things that he sees in the room. And the creator says, David, I am your father. David says, and they start talking for a minute, and, and then David says, which is he's the, the creation, isn't it interesting that you created me, you will eventually die, and I will live forever. And the creator says, he gets this weird look on his face, and he goes, give me a cup of tea, David. And then David gets an even stranger look on his face, like, why in the world would you ask me to get you a cup of tea? I'm not your slave. I'm not your servant. He doesn't say that, but you could tell that's what he's thinking. And David goes, what? And so the creator says, get me a cup of tea, David. So he gets, you know, he keeps this weird look on his face. He gets up, gets him some tea, puts the tea down, and he's like, wow. And that made you think, or made me think, this is a power struggle immediately. The creation, David, what some might consider artificial intelligence, which here's another thing that's very fascinating. If you create a conscious, a conscious being, even though it has artificial intelligence type parts, like you would think of as a computer, is it artificial intelligence or is it something else? And we're going to get into that in a minute. That's the whole power struggle. With the Nag Hammadi scriptures, the Gnostic texts, that were almost completely destroyed by the Vatican and through the Crusades and the burning of, of libraries and almost the complete destruction of anything that didn't fit into the canon of the Romanized Holy Bible. Archons. They create man, and they realize man is greater than them. So what do they do? Well, they try and suppress man and keep mankind at a specific lower level. It's prophecy in Hollywood, you guys. I mean, this is prophecy in archetypal stories that have been played out for who knows how long, maybe since the beginning of time. So when David gets the tea for his creator, Remember, get the tea.com for the best and healthy supplements, colostrum, detox, skin care, immune support, colon cleansers, and more. Check it out. Get the tea.com. He's he sets the tea down next to the creator and he, you know, he stirs it for him. And then the scene leaves at that. I mean, that's the end of the scene. Now, another thing that I noticed that looked very similar to what I thought could be the DNA strand in the Sumerian tablet that I showed you guys recently where you've got Enki, Enlil, you've got the two of Gigi on each side of Enki and Enlil, the bird people, then above them, they're all pointing up and then you can see Anu and the sky ship. And then in between all them, in between Enki and Enlil in the center, looks like the tree of life or almost like a DNA. That might actually be some type of antenna system. It looked very similar to an antenna that was set up in the film, and I wonder, could that have been an antenna to communicate with Anu? So that's a new theory, a new possibility I want to throw out there. So there is a ship of 2,000 colonists. So the, the next scene, once that scene is over, you see this ship in the, in the heavens, in space. <laughs> and... They show an image of the ship, but it's like the skeleton of the ship, essentially. Just a real quick, like, one or two second blurp. 
and it looks like a penis with balls. You know, it's that was one of the first phallus subliminal symbols that they throw out at you. But they're out in space. There's 2,000 colonists. They, they get woken up by shock and awe because the ship is set up on autopilot while they're all sleeping in chirogenics chambers because they're in long flight. And the ship has this really cool system where it'll open up these gigantic metallic tarps when it's in space and it'll gather the sunlight and it'll use that, you know, it'll use the star's light and energy to power the ship. So as it does that, when it opens everything up, about 15 minutes in, there's this explosion far out in space from a nebula or something that causes a shock wave, which in return messes up the opening of these metallic tarps. So as people are in sleep, the only person that's awake, it's not a person, it's a, an offshoot of David. It's another one of the androids, but it isn't David, but it looks just like him on this ship. David was on Prometheus, by the way. If you watch the film Prometheus, David that starts out in the beginning of this film, Alien Covenant, is actually the android that was created by the creator that started the expedition of Prometheus on the first film. So, so keep up with me. So... Back to the shock and awe, current film, Alien Covenant. The, the people that are in the chirogenics chambers get taken out of the chirogenics chambers because of this ship malfunction from this explosion in deep space. So a few people die. A new captain gets put in the, as the lead of the crew. And they pick up this signal, this rogue signal, as they're outside trying to fix the, the metallic tarps. And so, being a colonist mission, when they pick up this signal, they're like, wow, this signal is coming from an area that has habitable planets. All signs show that these planets are habitable. Let's take our people there. And one of the crew says, this is just too weird because we're all trained to look for planets like this. And we've looked for this planet in that area or something of a habitable planet in that area now for years and nothing showed up. And now all of a sudden, out of the blue, it's there. And you want to go there? Don't you think that's a bad idea? Well, they go there anyway. And when they get to the planet, they s- a beautiful planet, yet shortly after they get there, one of them realizes that there's no animals. There's tons of biology. I mean, there's lots of tree life and, and plant life, but there's no animals. And they find one of the ships there that was in the film Prometheus on the planet that they ended up getting to where they found out where the Anunnaki were. So they get to that planet where the Anunnaki were. They call them the engineers. And at the end of Prometheus, they end up leaving that planet in one of these ships. And it's like a horseshoe, almost a horseshoe-shaped ship. Well, in the, the new film, Alien Covenant, they also find one of those ships, those horseshoe ships, but it's abandoned. And as they're out exploring, one of the crew members steps on what looks like horse dung. But what happens is, and he doesn't see this, that emits a nanoparticulate, a whole bunch of these nanoparticulates, metallic nanoparticulates, and they end up forming into this module that travels into his ear canal and then latches into his ear canal and turns his body into an incubator for one of these new aliens. But here's what's interesting, you guys, is remember just a couple weeks ago, I was talking about how, I mean, I've been talking about this for years, but I brought this up in a podcast recently, maybe not even a couple weeks ago, about how I see that these nanoparticulates that can be easily put into these stratospheric aerosol injections and into different fuel sources. So you don't even, I mean, it can literally be put into fuel that's put into commercial airplanes as well. So once it's emitted via contrails, not even chemtrail applications, this can happen also. These nanoparticulates, imagine these things getting lodged into people's bodies. Imagine these nanoparticulates getting lodged into people's ear canals and into different parts of their cerebral cortex in their brain where they could actually latch into 
different parts of the body and be used as a transducer or as a transmitter to relay information back and forth and also be used as like a a Trojan horse in a computer where you could have somebody that could be sending out code and receiving information back code as well. So see what you see, hear what you hear, feel what you feel, think what you think, pick all that up via code that can be transmitted on a computer screen for everybody to read. This is a little bit different, but I'm thinking to myself, are we tapping into the same thing here? I mean, a lot of these ideas that come into my mind, I've been thinking about since I was a little kid, now I'm just more fine tuning it and then you see it happen in films a week after you talk about it, two weeks after you talk about it, shortly after you discuss it. And it just makes you wonder, oftentimes art mimics future realities with a Hollywood spin in Hollywood. And also there's very good stories and symbolism and archetypes. You just have to know what to look for. You have to know what to look for. You have to decipher through the BS because there's a lot of that too. So once he steps on this incubator, or not incubator, but essentially this cow dung looking compilation of these nanoparticulates, you know, he gets sick shortly after, but it takes a little while. Now, David, the new intelligence created that you see at the beginning of the film where he's, you know, he's being questioned by his creator and then he just realizes immediately how much more intelligent and how much more capable he is, or at least how he feels he's much more capable than the creator. Well, David has a serious agenda and he doesn't like people. He literally creates this nanotech gray goo slash bio metallic manipulator. And when he leaves, now, now go back with me. Let's go back to the film Prometheus for a minute. At the end of the film, David and what's left of the crew, they leave and they want to go find out who the engineers were of the engineers, where the engineers came from. So that's what planet they're on now. Alien Covenant is on that planet. That's the planet that they find. Well, previously, when David gets to that planet, and this is before the new crew gets there, the new colonists, when David gets to that planet, there is a huge ceremony going on. And you can see thousands and thousands and thousands of these engineers on the ground getting ready for a ceremony. And David hijacked one of their ships, and they don't realize it. They think that David in one of these ships that's a part of this ceremony is, is one of them. And as these ships start to line up, it's really incredible. This whole thing is just amazing. You've got to watch it in the movies. It's just it's surreal. I would definitely recommend watching it on the big screen because that big screen just makes it so much more amazing. Like, literally, this film brought me to tears several times. Just thinking about it, it's, it's just unbelievable. But it's, it's scary, it's frightening, and majestic at the same time in a very dark aspect. So these, these ships are lining up, and as these ships line up, all the, all the engineers on the ground are gathering together, and they're looking up at it, at these ships, and... And these ships line up in a, in a sacred geometrical pattern. As that happens, and everybody on the ground gets excited, they see that these swarms of like nanoparticulates start coming out. And just, just, and they, they, they could tell something's wrong, so they start running. And, and these trillions and trillions of nanoparticulates, this gray goo type stuff, just, it swarms out and it, it infects everybody on the ground. And it kills them all, almost immediately, just, just wipes them all out. So David, the creation of the creator, with this God-like complex, just like you read about the archons in the Nag Hammadi scriptures were almost completely destroyed. And the neat thing is the Nag Hammadi scriptures are making a comeback. 
So I look at David as the, you know, he, he's got a lot of comparisons. He's reminded me a lot of Yal the Both that's described in the Nakamati, but even darker in a sense, because he wants, well, maybe not, because didn't think about this for a minute. And I know this is probably going to upset people that feel, you know, if, if you read the Old Testament and you believe that the God of the Old Testament is the divine creation of all, you know, he, he causes a flood, right? He says, look, earth is just too wicked. I'm going to cause a flood and wipe everybody out. And some people think that earth was so wicked and people were so wicked at that time that everybody on the planet was so wicked they needed to be wiped out. I don't buy it. I don't think that everybody on the planet was so wicked they needed to be wiped out at that time, except for Noah and, and his crew. Maybe there's something more sinister to it. Maybe he didn't like what he had created, the, manip the manipulation, the genetic manipulation that he did to the original organic earth being didn't meet his requirements, so he wiped him out. It's very eerie, the parallels that this film portrays of David and this intelligence being godlike, yet not God, but thinking it's God in essence. And then David is this hardcore genetic manipulator. He does all sorts of weird manipulation of human and machine and animals. And, and then I think of the Sumerian scribes and all these ancient petroglyphs and hieroglyphs and scriptures and scribes that talk about the genetic manipulation of man, animal, there's plenty of images, plenty of evidence that shows that people either thought that kind of stuff existed back then or it really did. And it wasn't just in dreamland. Now, I'm going to call this gray goo in this film nano DNA hybrid heat seekers of transformation and destruction of organic life designed to infect all natural biology in the animal kingdom. And David even said that at one point. He said, you'll be fine, because he was talking to his brother, the other android that was created by his creator, but his brother didn't have the ability to think as well as he did. There was something unique about David. Now, also, what I would like to note about the film is the way that the nano DNA hybrid formula is also similar to other films that I've seen, but it takes it to a whole new level with the biology transfer. The Day the Earth Stood Still, Keanu Reeves is an extraterrestrial in that film, and he almost wipes out the entire planet, but something convinces him not to. And gray goo is used to wipe out the planet in that film also. How powerful is the gray goo? And this gray goo tech is also something that could be used as a antenna, as a energy source, as a memory source. It's like a, a sum of the whole. It's like the Borg hive mind, where the further it emits, the more it controls, the more it assimilates. I can definitely see the concept behind this. And with the singularity... The faster machines get, the smaller they get also. Think about that. With DNA, you can take strands of DNA and imprint additional information on the information that's already on that DNA. You can actually take, scientists and universities have done this, human DNA and imprint computer viruses, computer virus code into human DNA. Think about that for a minute. Imagine... Wi-Fi tech being able to blast your DNA with computer code viruses that could act and mimic just like a cold virus, but with a code of computer printing via Wi-Fi. Look at viruses under microscopes anyway. They look like some weird creation that's artificial. Nanoparticulates, frequency manipulation machines. You can read about that in the... Geoengineering Act of 2017 that lawmakers from Rhode Island have released. Egyptian hieroglyphs, Sumerian cuneiform tablets, myst mystery schools like the Rosicrucians all show these wings 
you've seen these wings, right? And then there's that circle, and some feel that the circle represents the sun, the light source, the energy source of this solar system, which some people worship the sun, some people worship the energy of the sun. It all depends on your connection of what you look at symbolically in your mind, in your representation, your reality, your perception. But the Anunnaki wings, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. This is where it gets really good in your face. The Anunnaki wings that are found throughout various cultures of history are on the name tags of the crew in Alien Covenant. Yeah, the Anunnaki wings. How cool is that? Also, H.R. Giger, his ingenious artwork, his creations of the organic transformed into biotechno erotic geometrical masterpieces, oftentimes with sacred geometry, resonates at a whole new level of epic proportions. Fantastic. Awesome. I feel this movie in the series is the best yet, hands down. And my next favorite would probably be Aliens that came out in the 80s. Not the original Alien, but the sequel of that, Aliens. Excellent film. Excellent. This one is even better. And then the combination of the way that they incorporated the biotech, H.R. Giger. Now, listen to this. The aliens transform organic life forms into a quasi-biometallic, phallus-dominated beasts of mass destruction with instincts of pure predator with little remorse for others. The incorporation of Anunnaki, engineers, scriptures of antiquity, pre-flood, eugenics, and genetic manipulation of mankind, animals, beasts, etc. is expressed brilliantly also. Alien Covenant also gives a dire warning of what some consider AI, artificial intelligence. Yet as I said before, is it really artificial just because its body is made of different materials? Is your conscience, is your conscious mind made of physical matter anyway? This film reminds me of the Gnostic text, hands down, the secret book of John, other scriptures that have been almost completely destroyed. What happens if we create intelligence so far above and beyond our own that it decides to do the same thing? Not only destroy us, but the engineers and the engineers of the engineers and the engineers of the engineers and the engineers of the engineers of the engineers of the engineers of the engineers, of the engineers. Where does it end and where does it begin? And how does it end? And what is the end? For if there is no end, where is the new beginning? How much of this movie has happened in the past and is the past the present and is the future there? Really a separation besides our perception. And what does the energy of our perception even mean? And is it the fuel that feeds the machine, the spark that feeds the machine? We live in amazing times, ladies and gentlemen. You think it, it is life somewhere. Some form of life. The thought is life. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> now, in this physical form, this is a denser form of life. This is a denser vibration. When you think something, it is still connected to this dense form. It is an offshoot, an offspring of self. Be careful what you think, ladies and gentlemen, because the more, <laughs> the more abilities you have, with great power comes great responsibility. Remember that. You can use power. You can use knowledge. You can use information. You can use materials for good, you can use it for bad. And I think you know what good is, and I think you know what bad is. Sometimes I get nervous about people that have certain abilities and what they do with those abilities. Because as amazing as knowledge is, 
in the wrong hands, it can be used for utter destruction. Balance is important. Working with others is important. Realizing labels and specific words that you feel are correct, somebody else might pick up a completely different interpretation of that word because maybe they the definition that they looked up in the dictionary. I mean, each English word, thinks, think about this. How many different definitions are there for just about every word? And then think about the differences throughout the years that the dictionary even has changed. You know, you can look up specific words from 10, 20 years ago that have been changed to now. So just really think about that for a minute. And when you learn to resonate at a mental level with other people and almost see what they see before they see it, hear what they hear before they hear it, know what they're going to say before they say it. I used to be really bad at that, especially growing up. I would already know what my parents were going to say before they'd say it or what the teacher was going to say before he or she would say it or what my friends would say. Not completely, but the overall concept and sometimes just about. And I would answer, I would finish what they were saying before they would even get started sometimes. I would finish the second half of what they were about to say and it would not only annoy them, but also kind of freak them out. And I think that when we're younger, we have those abilities even more because we haven't blocked them out as much. And where am I going with this? When you are at that level, yet you learn to still listen and not interrupt people, it becomes a lot easier to have communication that is effective and benefits people. So I, I guess the moral of the story is communication is key. And also, even if you know what somebody's going to say, hear them out. Have a fantastic day, wherever you are. Make sure to support our sponsors, GetTheTea.com, if you're looking for the ultimate in health supplements. Everything from digestive support to immune health support, skin care products, GetTheTea.com. Also, check out the Quick Bivy. I'll leave a link in the video description box. These things are a few ounces. They fit in the palm of your hand. And if you're taking a road trip, if you're going on a hike, if you're going on an extended trip somewhere, um, bug out bag, camping bag underneath your car seat. You should definitely have one of these things in case of an emergency situation where you need to stay warm longer. And they're great for gifts also. So check it out. Quick bivy. Leakproject.com is the website for premium content. We've got, I think we're up to like 900 podcasts now on youtube.com slash clandestine time lord and you want to hear a really neat synchronicity the other month about a month or two ago i did my 666th podcast <laughs> when i did that podcast the podcast that i uploaded was of the o president obama slogan yes we can backwards yes we can is thank you satan I did not realize at the time that I uploaded that podcast that it was the 666th podcast at the time. So I thought, man, that's that's a strange synchronicity right there, isn't it? The 666, thank you, Satan, yes, we can. And then yesterday I uploaded my 900th podcast, and it was on the Tripartite Tractate, which is a Gnostic text that describes divine providence, God. And I think it's an excellent description of God, yet it's missing one key element, and it's huge. The feminine aspect. You've got the, the Father, the Church, and the Son, yet where's the feminine aspect? And the way that the Father is described, it makes sense as if the Father, there is no, nothing before the Father, 
and nothing after, so the father was never born. So the only true father in the sense is one that's never been born. So I guess you could look at it in that sense. Yet I still feel that many of these ancient texts and scriptures miss key points. I mean, as good as it described source and God, and I think it did a good job, missing the feminine aspect, that's half of everything. I mean, that's a huge, huge, huge key. So how much, even with these sacred texts that might be a lot more accurate than other scriptures that people have access to on the grand scale, how much are they missing? And what do we do to bring it all together in harmony to where people can look at it and actually agree with it and not say, well, it wasn't in the Bible or it wasn't in that old text, so I don't believe it. Or are people just not supposed to know? Does it just get to a point to where only a certain people should have the right to know what's really going on and not everybody has the right to know the truth because maybe they're not ready for it? I don't think so. I think, I think everybody should have the right to know. Whether or not they can unplug, that's a different story. You know, certain people, maybe they don't want to unplug. And why should you have the right to unplug them if they don't want to unplug? These are all just questions that I ask myself. I'm not saying I have the answers. Do you? Be the change you want to see, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to become a premium member at leakproject.com for 10 bucks a month or 50 bucks a year, we're doing a special right now yearly. It's like 60% off. You will get access to exclusive content. And we are doing longer interviews for the premium section. So people that like to listen to, you know, maybe a two hour interview, hour plus long interviews, that's really what the premium section is for. And I am really excited because I've got a long list of very intelligent people from around the world that specialize in various fields that are going to be on Leak Project. So thank you. Be the change you want to see.